PSA has finally broken the silence on how they are going to get through their entire backlog of cards that just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. PSA are doubling their entire pricing. Now, people have been kicking off and booting off about this all day on Facebook, Instagram, calling PSA greedy, but I see this price increase as a genuine first step to working through that entire backlog that's been building up over the past year. So before you thumbs down this video and start bitching at me in the comments, but Shay, the hobbies are already too expensive. PSA are just being greedy. I want my cards back. Stop for a second, hit that thumbs up button because I think that doubling the prices is actually going to help you get your cards back quicker. How? Keep watching to find out. Are you ready for Shreddy? <laughs> so guys, it's official. The prices to grade your cards with PSA has now doubled. Some people are not happy about this at all. Look, it's no secret. All those collectors know that PSA times over the past 10 months, 12 months have been an absolute joke. I have had zero updates on my bulk submission that I made in August last year. Something had to be done and PSA are finally doing something about it and actually addressing it. Now I've seen people on Instagram actually going as far to say PSA should stop taking new orders and work their way back through the catalogue. As good as that might sound, it just is never going to happen. It's a pipe dream. Why? Because imagine you're a business and you're doing really well and you're getting more and more business coming in and more and more money coming in. And regardless of how busy you are and how slow you are at getting through those jobs, people are just throwing money at you and want to use your services. That's what's happening with PSA right now. Because of Pokemon, because of sports cards, because of collectibles in general. So PSA sees this huge increase in demands, sees all this new business coming in there is zero chance that PSA is going to completely stop accepting new customers. It just isn't going to happen. That would be like them closing the doors and just saying, go and use another grading service. We don't want to actually be in business anymore. It just ain't going to happen. If demand stays as it has been over the past 10 months, that PSA backlog is never going to be complete. It's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. By doubling the prices, this is a step to help you reduce that backlog, help the backlog from keep on stacking up and getting bigger and bigger. And it might sound crazy that I'm advocating this double pricing structure, but hear me out. I genuinely think that this increase in price is gonna help you get your cards back sooner. So the new prices are on screen now. And I'm gonna briefly talk about why the backlog is as big as it is before I jump into talking about why this new price is actually going to help matters. One of the biggest reasons for this backlog is because Pokemon is super hot right now. The hottest and most popular it's ever been since 1999. With more people than arguably ever in the Pokemon collecting space, the demand for graded cards is only going up and up because of genuine collectors, because of flippers, because of investors, the demand is at an all time high for graded Pokemon cards. This means there's more people in the hobby, which means there's more cards being graded. Cards that five years ago would probably never have ever been sent off to PSA. When I got my first edition complete base set, the thought of sending off a common card or an uncommon card from that set would have been laughable. Even last year, when I took my cards down to Graded Gem, the guys there advised me not to send them express with the hollows, just to send them bulk. So to go from that to 2020, 2021, people are sending off common cards from base set Unlimited. Bulbasaur, Charmander, Pikachu, Squirtle, limited base sets are being sent off because look at these for sale prices. And these cards are common. As soon as you're done watching this video and hitting that thumbs up button, go and check your bulk pile. Go and pull out your old binders. Go and pull out that shoe box that's under your bed. Dig through your bulk and I can guarantee you, you have got a ton of these starter Pokemon in your bulk. Whether they're unlimited or whether the first edition Jungle Eevees or Jungle Pikachu cards, these common cards are now all worth some money in a PSA 10, even a PSA 9. So not only do we have extra common cards going in for grading that typically never would have been sent in or would have very 
rarely been sent in. We have a bunch of lapsed collectors who are getting back into the hobby, or a bunch of people who are seeing Pokemon hit mainstream news to say Charizard is selling for $300,000, $400,000, $500,000. So people my age are digging out their old childhood collections, spending half an hour researching online, pulling all of their old scratched, silvered, tattered cards out of the binders, sending them to be graded. We then have box breaks happening weekly, if not daily, on YouTube, whether it's vintage, whether it's modern. All of the cards being pulled out of these and then being sent off to grading. So demand in general from regular collectors, lapsed collectors, people just getting into Pokemon for the first time, flippers, investors, are all looking to get these cards slabbed up so they become more valuable. Then we have the modern collectors. I see it all the time on Instagram, Facebook, people are getting any hit, any hollow, pulling them, sleeving them up and sending them to be graded. Literally, I'm seeing cards that are almost worthless, being sleeved up, and people are posting about how they're sending them off for graded. Cards that 18 months ago would never have been considered to get graded because they're just not valuable enough. This is because some kind of false narrative or some false ideal that people have that any cards that are graded are gonna be worth a ton of money. So that XY Evolutions Polyrath is being sent off and people just expected gold bars to come back through the post. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with getting any cards graded. As a collector, everybody has their favorite cards, their favorite Pokemon, and for some people, grading cards isn't about the money or the value, it's about actually protecting that card. Who am I or who is anybody on Facebook or Instagram to say, you shouldn't grade that card or that card isn't worthy to be graded just because it's not valuable or expensive. People can literally send off any cards that they want, but because people are sending off a lot of junk to get graded, it's making that backlog that PSA already has even bigger and bigger. That's making more people kick off, that's making more people pissed off, and making more people complain about waiting times. So we can't stop people submitting any cards they want outside of PSA literally closing down shop, which ain't gonna happen. So how does PSA stop this backlog from getting any bigger by making people think twice about what they are going to submit. By doubling the prices on all of the grading services, it makes that PokeTuber who's just pulled a holo pack fresh from Steam Siege think twice about is this card really worth $20 to get graded when the card value itself might not even be worth $20. PSA needs to try and deter some of these submissions being made in order to stop this backlog getting bigger and bigger so they can work through what they've already got and work through the new submissions that are coming in. Their solution to this is by doubling their prices. This is a win-win for PSA because it means it keeps their cash flows nice. They still know they're going to get some cards coming in. It's more revenue coming into the business, but it also prevents that backlog from piling up bigger and bigger. It makes their workload more manageable. But any want that are saying PSA are just doing this because they're greedy, we could actually see PSA hypothetically be making less money due to the price elasticity of trading cards. You may be happy spending $10 a card, sending hundreds of them off every single month, but overnight, by doubling that price, are you still gonna be as happy to send off as many cards and literally double the amount you're spending on what you've been doing for the past six months, 12 months, 10 years? There's gonna be a lot of people potentially put off by this additional cost. PSA could completely lose customers because they don't want to pay that double price price tag. This is called price elasticity and is a term used in economics and marketing and is something that I've lectured about many times. Essentially what price elasticity means is if the price of a product or service is increased, how much does it affect the sales or the demand of that product? If we see a price increase, or in this case a 100% price increase, what kind of impact is that going to have on the demand for the service? If there's a big drop off, that's considered a highly elastic product. If there's only a small drop off in demand, and it's considered an inelastic product or service. So it's probably gonna be a few more weeks before we can see what kind of impact this is having on the PSA customer base. But judging by the comments I've seen on social media today, I think a lot of people are going to stop sending in as many cards with PSA or change from PSA to CGC 
Infinity, which has a slightly cheaper, and by slightly I mean $9 a card, pricing option. If the demand hasn't changed for this, then you've got to ask yourself, if you were in PSA's position and you knew you could get twice as much money and have the same amount of customers, then why wouldn't you do that? So it'll be interesting to see what the demand and what the customer usage is like of PSA over the next couple of weeks. And I'm interested to hear from you guys. Are you going to still continue submitting with PSA with the same volume? Will you be thinking twice about the amount of cards you send in now and reducing how often and how many cards you submit? Or will you be ditching PSA completely and going for an alternative service? It'll be really interesting to kind of see what everybody out there is thinking. So please do let me know down in the comments below. So assuming that that PSA is going to be getting less cards coming in for submission, that means that backlog isn't grown at the rate it is. It hopefully means that PSA can start working through that backlog a little bit quicker, which means good news for anybody who is waiting for cards back from PSA. That includes me, and that's going to include a ton of you guys out there as well. I'm still waiting for my August submission back. Express, I was told it was going to take three months, and here we are in March, and I have literally no idea when that's coming back. My bulk submission, I have had zero updates on that at all. For any regular submitters, it now means a couple of things. Continue your submission rate as is, and you're effectively just doubling the cost of what you're already doing, and you're gonna just continue to do it as so. You'll absorb those costs, and you can just continue grading, selling cards, flipping cards, business as usual, but you're just gonna have slightly less profits. Essentially, you're gonna be doubling your costs and overheads of your grading services. You can reduce what you're submitting, how often you're submitting, and the cards that you're submitting, so you can be a little bit more critical and think, okay, do I want to only send in cards that are going to get a nine or a 10, or am I happy to keep sending cards in that maybe it's going to get PSA six, seven, or eight? Is it really worth sending in this brand new card that isn't overly valuable? It'll just help you make your mind up and help you decide which cards you should and shouldn't send in. The last option, like I've already said, is using a different grading service that's not PSA. Now, BGS already increased their prices a couple of weeks ago, so it only really leaves CGC at the minute that's the cheaper alternative. So of course this price increase comes as bad news to anybody who is regularly submitting cards and doesn't really care about how long it takes to get back. However, from what I can see on Instagram and even my own feelings, my cards have been gone away for a long time now with literally zero updates. I want to chase what's happening with them. There's a ton of other people out there as well, all in the same kind of position. So if this increased price means that cards are gonna be coming back a little bit quicker, then for the time being, for the interim, I'm all for that. PSA, when things kind of drop and the buzz of Pokemon and card collecting dies off a little bit, could revert back to their own pricing or could then discount the prices. But in all honesty, guys, I think we're getting a new precedent for pricing now from PSA. I've got some stats here about other grading services. So on average, comics cost anywhere between $20 and $27. Coins between $14 and $25. Figures, $32 or more. Video games between $18 and $35. Cards with PSA, they're now $20 plus. So it seems like the prices are a lot more competitive or a lot more in line with other collectibles out there. Now, CGC could differentiate itself and become the budget option but I don't know if that's kind of the brand position that CGC wants. Mary's at the minute they're just interested in you know building up that user base and building up the customer base but I honestly wouldn't be surprised if down the road CGC also follows suit and ups the price of their grain service as well to not be seen as a budget service. They're considered premium in the comic book space so why wouldn't they want to see premium in the trading card space especially when it's as hot as it is. So so I think what we're getting here guys is the best of a bad situation in all honesty. Prices have gone up which yeah it sucks when edit, whenever prices go up but if that means that the service turnaround times are going to be a bit quicker and if PSA do follow through with what they're saying about investing in modern technology to help speed up and automate that grading process using technology then I think long term it's way way better for the hobby rather than relying some, on somebody's judgement. If we can have precise metrics that a computer can scan or that technology can scan your cards then it's an objective yes or no or it's an objective 10 or a 9 and we don't have that risk of just a random person thinking oh that deserves a 9 or that deserves a 10. So what do you think about this price increase guys? Again the on screen now so you can see the entire price breakdown. Just remember
remember that everything has doubled in price from what it previously used to be. I am genuinely interested to hear what your thoughts are on this. Do you think it is a case of PSA being greedy? For the record, I don't think that. Or do you think that it is a good step forward to helping these cards come back at a more timely manner? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button to never miss a Pokemon card classic from the Jacks Stacked Serial Thriller of Pokemon Card Collecting. Like for cards, like for Pokemon, like for the YouTube algorithm. And until next time, remember that collecting ain't no gimmick, it's a lifestyle.